Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Well, hello there, you delicious devils. I hope you're all doing bloody well. My name's Mikey, and welcome along to another episode of Draw With Mikey, episode 141. Hello, guys. We are back here on a Wednesday. As of recording this right now, it is pouring down with rain in the southeast of England on a Wednesday morning, so I'm feeling pretty cosy with my lovely cup of tea. Let's give this a sip. I'm at the end of my milk, but I've got loads of long-life um, soy milk. Ooh, ooh, soy boy. Um, that should hopefully just keep me tidied over until the rain stops and I can be bothered to go to the shops. And of course, I'm just sharing whatever artwork I've been doing in the background, uh, which is currently um, just some relatively simple, I'd love to say it was quick, but I still take ages, just some relatively uh, simple fan art from Among Us. I thought we could have a go at doing Red is Sus, but also Smexy, and uh, somehow just kind of have an attractive female form, but also keep the bean like aesthetic to all of the people. So I went for a kind of a Neon Genesis Evangelion style. Uh, skin suit midriff um, but other than that keeping just for very big overall shapes um, so just a little something something uh, excellent game by the looks of it I notice it's taking the internet by storm I actually lack the friends required to facilitate playing such an adventurous title um, but I can at least do the fan arts and fantasize so uh, you know you find your happiness where you can uh, guys I hope you're well and um, for anyone not in the know as you might have noticed this is just the midweek rambling unedited series it's my opportunity to touch bases with you lovely people so maybe you're getting some work done in the background of your own always tell me what it is always let me know your video game and anime suggestions and um i'm just sharing what i happen to have been up to recently i think next week i'll show you all the tifa stuff but i just want to make sure it's all out on patreon first and as ever if you're listening to this episode on a wednesday the chances are right now i'm actually live on twitch.tv forward slash mikey mega mega um playing probably some deus ex or some other retro cyberpunk video game titles why not pop along and say hello that's also where I do some art drawing. And that's my way of saying, if you see me in the background of today's video, just derping around in the corner of the screen, all of that stuff's live on Twitch. But if that's not for you, no worries. That's exactly why we have the DWM. So get yourself into the comment section below. Let me see what you're up to. And with any luck, I'll be reading your comment next week around. Let's sip some tea. Mmm. <sighs> Delicious. Um, so guys, yeah, hope you're all well. Hope things are going good at your end. In last week's episode, when we did the Aerith fan art from Final Fantasy VII, I did ask you guys, uh, essentially, what are the driving things that keep you interested in video games? What does it for you? Is it uh, the good character, the good narrative, good game mechanics, the story? Uh, kind of let me know what the driving force is. I was going to also do a Twitter poll just asking people to rank for Final Fantasy titles, their personal preference from best to worst. But you don't get enough options in Twitter to actually kind of rank it from 1 to 15. So let me just throw that in for you guys right now. Anybody who's played Final Fantasy games, don't worry if you haven't, you can talk to me about anything. This is a safe space. Um, anyone who's played any Final Fantasy titles, what are your favourite Final Fantasy titles? Rank them for me from best to worst. Just list it all up in chat. Because I'm just curious to putting together like an idea of like what is the overall consensus of this incredible um, but not necessarily even franchise. Uh, so let me know. And also, let's just crack on and actually read the comments. Uh, Kitudi says, I can't believe my eyes. He's back. Oh, yes, Kitudi, I have returned. I hope you're doing bloody well. Um, although it's always the case that I'm back for a little bit and then I go for a little bit. Uh, as you know, I'm very inconsistent uh, and true to myself when it comes to making internet content. I love YouTubing. I love doing the twitching because uh, I love that it kind of puts me in touch with you guys and we all get to hang out and have fun and share ideas. That's really awesome. But equally, I'm not willing to give myself an emotional breakdown over this sort of thing. I see plenty of people who just try to make sure they're uploading all the time, working really hard, uh, making that content, doing that grind, 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 grind. That always seems to be the key word. And I'm just like, well, no, because that would drive me crazy. So uh, whenever I feel like I'm not in the mood to do this sort of stuff, I simply don't. And that keeps me a happy bean. Um, but guys, it is always enjoyable to do it. I wouldn't if I didn't. And it's lovely to be vibing with you again. So thank you, Kituri. Lovely to be back. Um, bootleg seven granddad says our god mikey gave us the greatest source he has ever made praise mikey for his creations oh bootleg granddad is <laughs> very very kind i'm glad you enjoyed the air fan art we'll be doing some more soon um but as ever like sometimes throughout the week i might work on a piece of art that's like i'm relatively proud of i might just derp along i might just actually fill up the sketchbook with loads of fails because i'm just not in the right vibe and i 
can't make anything particularly good. So these DWM episodes, it's always going to be whatever I happen to be up to. That's my get out of jail free card or clause just to say, you know, thank you very much for the kind words. It's not always going to be the highest standard you're going to see in these videos. Um, Ko or Cool says, finally, some more teaching from my favorite artists. Well, thank you, man. It's lovely to hear, dude. I hope you're doing well. And Dino Goodley says, hey there, Mikey. Hello there, Dino. Um, I was sat here feeling down in the dumps until I saw this video pop up in my notifications. Any advice about how to get over a girl who hasn't reciprocated your feelings? Read more. <gasps> oh, okay. Let's, uh, you're the best. Oh, thank you very much. Right, guys, get comfortable. Daddy Mikey is going to give you some uh, life advice right now. If you're into a girl and uh, she's not reciprocating your feelings and she's not actually into you, um, the very first thing you need to do is start dating another girl. Um, the first girl will eventually find out about this. She'll actually realize that you're not paying as much attention to her. Mikey, you chauvinist, disgusting bastard. How can you be saying this stuff? Trust me, just bear with me. These are just ideas. Um, start dating someone else. Be interested in another girl. Um, because what's that going to do? It's going to tell the first girl that A, you are dateable because somebody else is going to bother dating you. And B, um, you're desired. You're desired by other people. That gives you a sense of worth in our eyes. Now, I'm not saying that the girl in question or that people in general are shallow scumbags and everything needs to be manipulated. But I am saying there are these core mechanics that underlie our very um, species to do with mating and attractiveness. Like, because you can't, you can't choose to be attracted to something. It kind of happens or it is based on outside things. If we could choose who we were attracted to, we'd all just be going out of our best friends and life would be an absolute breeze. But it doesn't work like that. So, dude, um, just uh, start dating someone else. And to be honest, you'll surprise yourself. You might even just like the other person and forget about the first. And at the very least, it's going to give you value back to the first person and just raise your stakes. You don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be sniveling after people. It's bad for you and it's unattractive and nobody likes it. Life advice from Mikey. By the way, uh, disclaimer, um, you know, you know, Mikey likes to date and have fun, but as of right now, I am single. So you always need to be very, very careful when it comes to dating advice from single people. <laughs> like, we can't be trusted. We'll say anything. Uh, Nugget413 says, can you do Dangarangarompa art? Oh, Nugget. Ooh, woo, please. Oh, I'm not going to do it now. I just clicked on the read more button. <laughs> just got immediately grossed out first thing on a Wednesday morning. Your ooh, woo, please at the end has put me off. Um, actually, dude, I've got um, Dangarangarompa on my suggested to-do list from a lot of lovely people. So it's already in my notepad. Actually, I've got a notepad file open. Fantastic. And also, whilst we're here, vibing along in the beginning of the series, um, seeing as today's images in the background isn't older Patreon catch-up stuff, I'm still doing it. It's still going great. Thank you for asking. Um, i am got the... Uh, wait, let me try that again. I have the pleasure of shouting out some of last month's patrons, the August lot. I appreciate we're right at the end of September. Um, but much love to Dan... Uh, Five Luck 97, Charles L, Angus, Nathan, Trayton B, uh, Tatiana L, MEF or MEF, Justin J, Danny S, and Homong Chi L. You delicious, fantastic human beings. Thank you so much for all of the support. And of course, guys, if you want to get any of my stuffed ting business artwork, get your sweet selves up in Patreon. Blah, blah, blah. I think you all know what Patreon is. Don't worry about it. Let's not hard sell it. But much love to the patrons themselves. Um... Vivacious Alice. Oh, Vivacious Alice, I've seen you doing loads of comments recently on my other channel, Mega Mega 2, with all the Twitch stuff. Thank you very much. That's very, very kind. Anyway, you go on to say, oh my god, you're back. Uh, okay, now that I'm done literally screaming the hell out, <clears throat> welcome back, Daddy. We've missed you. <laughs> oh my god. Please, for the love of God, be over 18 when you talk to me like that. Uh, pleasure to be back, Vivacious Alice. I hope you're doing bloody well. And Umbul says, uh, what keeps you engaged in the game? For me, it's one of two things. Either the gameplay. Okay, now we're getting into the juicy stuff. The gameplay, a game with fun gameplay mechanics and room to grow into them. Oh, very good. The ability to kind of upgrade and learn so that it stays fresh for you and you feel that you're evolving in your combat or your engagement mechanics. Very, very good caveat to the end of that sentence. And also the story. If a game has only okay gameplay... It needs to have an epic story to keep me playing. If you really want to sink, if you really want me to sink the time in, a well-developed world is a must. Think things like Elder Scrolls and The Witcher, etc. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is it. Like I never used to. Um. So I kind of gave you my. Uh, and by the way, guys, what are your Final Fantasy titles? Rank them for me. Get in the comment section. Which are the best Final Fantasy games from start to last? And a little bit of an idea why. You know, Mikey wants to know. Um. But dude, yeah. Um, 
I never used to massively consider how important mechanics were um, for a game. Um, what's really brought that to light is my recent playthrough of uh, Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. I've currently just got the very last of the DLCs to do now, the Silver Sable, Silver Lining one. Um, but that's really just blown my mind. And the only reason I actually learned to appreciate the mechanics in that game is because it also came with an excellent story and characters that I actually invested in. And that kind of made me go, oh, wait, this is an all-round really, really good experience. Um, um, but even things like The Witcher 3, which has an excellent story, as you say, fantastic world building. So this is it. Like, um, somebody said, I wish this was my idea, but somebody said this in a live stream I was hanging out with. The difference between Skyrim and The Witcher for them is that Skyrim feels like a video game world that's built for you to play in and explore. Whereas when you play The Witcher, it feels like a world that exists that you just happen to be in. And if you weren't there, it would get along just fine without you. Um, so The Witcher has an incredible kind of sense of uh, atmosphere and world building. Um, but it does have still, even though I know it's way better than it used to be, some kind of janky mechanics from time to time. It's not a, it's not absolutely flawless. It's just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly good when it comes to the mechanic side of things. And so I forgive all those mechanics because I'm just, I'm already in. You have the buy-in from me. Um, so yeah, two massive kind of draws for video games. Uh, Leon DiCastro says, Mikey's female anime faces have really evolved over the years. Hey, thank you very much for saying, dude. Um, that's what happens when you keep drawing. You, you know, you evolve your style. You try, hopefully, to improve cross fingers. Uh, what about you guys? Hopefully you're all finding VR artworks coming along a bit. Uh, and of course, if it's safe for work, come on to Twitch. Come share with me live. We'll all take a look. The Entropy System says, My favourite part of any genre of game is when the story doesn't give you the whole story. <gasps> he likes the mystique. Uh, Resident Evil is a great example of this. If you don't pay attention to the details in the background or you ignore the journal entries, you only get tiny pieces of what's really happening. I love when the writers trust the audience enough to explore and piece together elements of the big picture on their own. T-E-S, you are also completely correct. And you're also touching on stuff I love. Um, the Resident Evil HD remake um, that I played on the PlayStation 3... Um, that might possibly be an example of the best remake ever. I'm not saying it's the best game ever, but in terms of like how to remake an original thing, that might actually be the pinnacle. It's certainly in the top five examples. Um, so I'm going to kind of take what you said uh, and just lean that against Resident Evil 2. Yeah, you can at face value pick up a PlayStation controller, turn on Resident Evil 2 and go, look, it's a town full of zombies. Let's go and fight some bosses. Oh, there's a creepy link between this mansion and an underground lab where it's all kicked in. But part of the magic is reading all of the journal entries and the diaries and the accounts of like why the people in the police station started splitting up the weapons, why they stopped trusting each other. All the creepy shit that's going on with uh, the chief of police, spoiler alert, Chief Irons. No, he's totally trustable. Don't worry about it. He's just like Dr. Wellington Yui. Yui. He's, a, he's an absolutely fine guy. Um, and all this other stuff. So yeah, it really all builds together. So that that kind of ability to, at face level, fully enjoy a video game title, or if you take the time to dig in a little bit more and stop and read everything, you're going to actually have an even fuller experience. Uh, the fact that you can do either and still enjoy it, depending on who you are, depending on what you like as a game player. Maybe you don't care about reading diary entries. Maybe you do. In either case, you're still going to have a good experience out of it. That is great balancing. That's great writing. That's... That's a great unified team putting all of this stuff together. Yeah, you've nailed it, dude. Uh, Tony says, uh, what keeps me into video games? We're having a very video gamey talk today, guys. Uh, go, come join me on Twitch. I love selling my... <laughs> guys, I love selling my Twitch these days. Come join me. We have fun. Twitch.tv forward slash Mikey Mega Mega. Now, don't worry about it. Just chill out here. Uh, what keeps me into a game is immersion, like playing Skyrim or Fallout New Vegas. I love to explore and interact with the world. Interesting. I notice when people start talking about Fallout, even though it's incredibly beautiful, they don't tend to talk about Fallout 4. Now, uh, two of my moderators, in fact, have strongly recommend I get into the Fallout series and that I actually play Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. And then I can play Fallout 4 if I really want to. Um, so, oh, mate, I just I need to put this thing onto my kind of game plan radar. But I think it's all going to have to wait till 2021. Let me just have a little sip. Hmm. That's a great shout, though. I love to explore and interact with the world. So, yeah, that thorough 
a larger scale world building. Mm. Um, I need to um, I need to give Skyrim a go properly, don't I? Um, Gasparzito says words cannot express my happiness right now. Hey, thank you very much for saying, dude. I'm just assuming that's you being kind about me coming back. And uh, Gihan Kashnuka says after such a long time. Yes, yes, my son, we're here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gert Shy says. I like games like Assassin's Creed, the old ones, and I'm hoping to get a system that can run Assassin's Creed Unity. Oh, wait, Unity, is that the one set in the French Revolution, or is that the one that came out just afterwards? As for the old titles, I've played Assassin's Creed 1. Uh, I think this is a great example of um, uh, having a really solid concept uh, first game, and then really ironing it out and improving it for the second one. So Assassin's Creed 1... I relatively liked. I liked the concept, I liked the idea, and I liked all the kind of people involved in the world. Um, but I was obviously, like most people, very, very sick of go to the place, climb the tower, find the chest, kill the guy, eavesdrop, walk along, kill the guy. Go to the place, climb the tower, get the chest, eavesdrop, walk along, follow, kill the guy, blah, blah, blah. And like every time in Assassin's Creed you killed somebody in the first game, I always got the feeling that you and your victim were like going to start making out or something. You have like this super deep intimate moment at the uh, essence of your death, which is kind of interesting. It's pseudo, it's pseudo uh, um, ego transference that the Benny Gesserit sisterhood become incredibly good at at the later, later Dune novels. So we're talking about Dune book number five onwards, where they're able to transfer a, a genetic touch. Uh, incredible stuff. Um, so that whole slowed time moment of someone's death and truly knowing a person in the moment of his, you know, last breaths is like a, a deep relationship between him and the assassin. Really, really interesting concepts. However, the game wasn't the best thing in the world. So they kept it, took those great concepts, took you into a more interesting time, and all of a sudden you are Ezio. Way more character, a thoroughly interesting guy um, with like existing family feuds in a very interesting kind of part of history to dive into uh, with maps where areas, many of which still exist and are noticeable um, today. If you go to Florence and stuff, yeah, win, 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 win. Uh, and, you know, more assassin stuff, more fluid mechanics, better climbing, uh, win boat all over. So, yeah, the early Assassin's Creed titles are great. I was considering giving all of Assassin's Creed... Now, Mikey wants to play everything, but I can only afford the time for the best of the best. I was just considering doing all of the Assassin's Creed games at some point. Um, but people would kind of just tell me that it's just gotten so mental that the latest Assassin's Creed game, the one where you are uh, a Greek warrior S, um, is kind of like a soft reboot, question mark? So let me know about it. Um, what I am going to be doing is uh, I'm quite excited about the idea of they're doing a Mass Effect remaster. Yes, yes, yes. I played the first Mass Effect game back when um, I finally got back into video gaming. So maybe about five years ago on a PlayStation 3. And I loved it. Like, sure, that is an example of a very janky, very old game. Um, but the overall kind of core of it and the story, the relationships and the actual turnaround of what's really going on, on in space. I was just like, whoa, yes, absolutely. That was my first proper space operatic video game sequence i never got into the other ones never played halo never played what was that one where they sunk in like half a million pounds for their first game and it was almost a flash in the pan but it was online divinity is it divinity hmm you know what i'm talking about you know that other space operatic video game series um so yeah i'm this is the time of the remasters and that works out great for a man who uh, wants to live the nostalgia, but would quite like to do it with some better graphics without any kind of loss of gameplay. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Anyway, I'm doing... Oh, so sorry, guys. I think I've just done a little digress. The focus of this series is you and your comments, so I'll pick up the pace uh, straight after some tea. One sec. Guys, I hope you're having a lovely day. Whoever you are, wherever you are, if you're sitting here relaxing because you need a break, if you're sitting here right now because you're doing some work in the background and you just happen to have Mikey on, I see you. It's great to have you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Come on, life's not always that easy, but you're doing fine as far as I'm concerned. And make yourself a cup of tea if you can. Strong recommend. Um, Bread Toast says, I felt that there's no Dio in the part, in this part. Oh, you're talking about what I'm saying in relation to JoJo's part four? Uh, Kira's theme starts playing. Oh no, am I? <laughs> okay, am I going to get into something where, uh, okay, well... Do you know what? I'm excited. Let me uh, crack on with uh, JoJo's part four. I still haven't read any 
uh, watched any since um you know a few days ago when we did the last episode out of the weekend but uh yes yes i'm not done we will be back on it superfly ghost says he's back finally i really missed you i considered actually going to the twitch website just to sign up to watch you uh thank you for coming back oh, it's free to do so it doesn't cost you anything thank you for coming back and saving me from twitch <gasps> oh wow superfly ghost do you hate twitch wait is this like a thing? Wait, am I missing out on something? Do people who hang around a lot on YouTube, like you lovely lot, do a lot of you actually hate Twitch? Is there a competition? Wait, guys, you have to let me know if I'm missing out on something. I'd hate to be like, hey guys, I really love Twitch. Doesn't everybody love Twitch? And one day somebody's going to be like, oh, Mikey, no. And I'll be like, hey, what? And you'd, you guys would be like, well, didn't you know that Twitch is run by the KKK? Mikey, Everyone thinks you're a horrific racist. <laughs> and I'd be like, no. Uh, so yeah, guys, wait, why do, why do you guys not like Twitch? Let me know, let me know. Um, Naru123, oh, Naru Michael, hey, dear man, says, I'm not going to lie, but that Little Nightmares DLC ending was more mind-blowing than the main story ending. Oh my God, yes. Okay, great shout. So on Twitch, I recently played Little, Night not, ugh, Little Nightmares. I do quite enjoy uh, semi-creepy uh, chill-out puzzle games, just so we can, you know, just vibe for a couple hours before I go to bed on the internet. Um, and that game, at the end, I was just like, whoa, this is really something. I really enjoyed it. Hell of a game. Then we played for DLC. Oh, my God. Talk about not being emotionally prepared. The end of the DLC, you're absolutely right, is uh, more mind-blowing than the end of the main game. And it just... Oh. As far as I'm concerned, Little Nightmares should be considered as... Uh, one whole story told from two perspectives. Like, sure, it's DLC, but really, it should all be part of the game, if you ask me. Or even maybe you could do... Um, so I don't know what's happening of Little Nightmares 2. I've not even watched the trailer yet, but I am excited. But, like, maybe you can make it a two-player game where you your two characters, um, as opposed to being a two-player co-op where you're both on the same screen, maybe you are just taking two completely different routes in a split-screen narrative that cross paths from time to time, at least once per chapter. That would be really, really intriguing. Mm, we'll come back to that. Uh, let me just scroll down a little bit, sip some tea. Inferno Hawk 9 says, I love Mikey's little Yoda grunt when he does something that uh, someone recommends something. Oh, <laughs> you're noticing my old man habits. Yeah, do I do a bit of Yoda grunting? Mm, 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 mm. I'm looking for a great warrior. What's not make one great? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's an instant smile on my face doing bad Yoda impressions. Um, Mario Boys says, do you know how many VPNs I have to activate to watch this video? I'm a pastor. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I'd love it if that was true. Dude, don't worry. All my work is technically safe for work, except for Patreon, obviously. That's a bit of a different animal. Um, so, uh, you know, everything I do, you can play it without feeling too guilty. But yes, there is an awful lot of spice for a bland community. I, I understand. Uh, Snow Rip or Snow Werps says, uh, you asked what I was doing whilst I'm watching this. I'm currently drawing, derping around, trying to get better at art, figuring out uh, that plausible Pixamum dump truck body frame. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, I never said it was plausible. I absolutely was making no attempt to keep it real. I made that uh, Pixar dump truck uh, drawing tutorial simply because, you know, how YouTube be. But I am trying to not rant and moan in this series quite as much as I used to because I want this to be a happy place and we can't talk about how much I hate this platform. <laughs> uh, anyway, as for video games, what it does for me is for gameplay. Uh, the original Doom made me a gamer. Oh, dude, on the days of DOS on Windows 95. And I still stick by that high-octane action for the most part. Snow Rip, yeah. Um, Doom 2016 obviously isn't what you've just mentioned, but is the one that really just blew my mind away. I really enjoyed that game because it fully achieved what it needed to be. Um, in terms of, like, we are going to be this type of game with this kind of effects and this kind of consistent visual look and feeling and aggressiveness absolutely fantastic work i've got doom eternal lined up to play on a computer haven't actually started it yet but i'm really looking forward to it when i get an opportunity uh, the soundtrack for doom is incredibly mind-blowing and uh there is a uh youtube wait let me see if i can find this youtube channel guys i um i uh, i'm just going into my video history it just might not be on my current login so bear with i found a youtube video by this doom playing doom 2016 history here we go and it 
was incredible. This guy, like, is playing it on nightmare mode, mode, except the nightmare is for the monsters more than it is for us. Like, he's doing double jumps by smashing out a railgun at a weird angle before 360 back round and just doing these quick hot swap weapon swaps. Look, guys, don't take my word from it. Okay, let me just log into another account really, really quickly. I think if I switch account over here... So basically, like, I have YouTube Premium now, but I purchased Premium when I was logged into the wrong account without double-checking. And the result of that is just this endless, slow headache of stuff. Guys! Okay, really, I'm sorry, I'm side thing. Um, has anybody seen a show called Raised by Wolves? I have never heard of this in my life. But I noticed that there's an android called Mother, who does a lot of flying and screaming and blowing people's heads up. Just a really random thing. Like, I'm trying to see if I can actually find what that show is, but... All I ever see are clips. Okay, uh, I'm just signing into one last account and then I'm going to give up on this sojourn. Did I ever tell you guys, this is the super casual midweek rambling series. It's, it's, uh, you're going to get all this bit. Here we go, I found it, I found it. Okay, guys, the dude in question, the YouTube channel is called Clockner. Clock as in clock and ner as in ner. C-L-O-C-K-N-E-R. There's a video called Doom, the Cadingar Sanctum and Nightmare. No, no, so this is it. There's no HUD. It's just pure beautiful footage. Uh, and this guy plays each of the levels of Doom in the most incredibly possible way. You guys might already be aware, but it's just, it's mental. And even just watching those videos gets my blood pumping. This is what I'm getting to. Doom is such like a blood pumping aggressive game, but I just saw this guy playing it way better than I ever will. And it just made me incredibly pumped to go and just play Doom Eternal now. Just these games have that energy and that chonk and that drive and that demon gore to just really make you go through and also because i'm currently playing deus ex human revolution right now as part of my old school cyberpunk catch-up series because you know we're leading up towards cyberpunk 2077 and deus ex human revolution is set in uh 2027 so 50 years before it just feels appropriate uh, and that game tries to be a lot of things but it focuses on you hacking and sneaking more than shooting people and the result is that the shooting part just doesn't quite feel gory and gutsy and visceral enough and even the sound effect of the guns just aren't very satisfying. Whereas you play something like Doom and you're just like, fuck yes, yes, <laughs> kill, rip and tear. So you know how it goes. Anyway, uh, Nash Wan says, dude, you came back at the right time. I was having such a bad day and this definitely made me smile a little bit more. Hey man, well, I'll take that. I want you guys to get into drawing if you've never tried it, but if I can just put a smile on your face, that's also win-win. Although, even saying that sentence makes me feel a little bit cringe. Do you know what I mean? You get a lot of people who are just like, hey, why are you getting into this? Why do you want to stream or YouTube or do something? Hey, man, I just want to put a smile on people's faces. I just want to build a lovely sense of community. Mmm, mmm, smell my farts, smell my farts. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, we get it, we get it. A sense of community is lovely. Putting a smile on people's faces is lovely. Now, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not boohooing that. I'm really glad that uh, my content uh, helps you out in any way. That's, that's me being honest. But also, like, you know, you can't keep saying the same thing over and over before people are just like, yeah, yeah, we get it. But, like, do you actually have a personality of your own or are you just going to save the word community a lot? It's like, um, do you guys remember what's that? So this is how I describe it. It's the series of car driving movies that got more and more absurd every like the first car driving movie um, was like a legitimate racing film. And then now they're on like the eighth one and all they ever do is drive around doing completely unbelievable stuff just going family 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 who sent a family sent a family who is family it's family oh i've got a family a family your family family um so it's kind of like that when you see some streamers and people and youtubers just like oh it's all about you guys community 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 <laughs> like it's true but if you keep saying it it's going to lose all sense of meaning so you just hold it back like calm down <laughs> oh no grumpy mikey's filtering through again into the stream oh so sorry let's come back uh, Maxi Mabula says, hey, Mikey. Hello there, Maxi. So when it comes to video games, I prefer the ones with very great graphics and storyline. Oh, so we just want it all then, don't you? Uh, and speaking about art, I've recently started digital art. I'm in, in, in the process of discovering my art style. Mate, aren't we all? Um, it's been completely a decade and a few years back since I've been into art. <gasps> Welcome back in. Welcome back in, good sir. Um, but all I sketched was realistic portraits of different people. That's why I think it's time to find my own art style. So this is it. Like, um, uh, one sec. Oh, is it? 
no, 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 I'm struggling to remember something and I've got a really strong feeling I'm not going to remember this in time. One quick moment. Let's just go over here. I'm just popping into my history because like it just touches on something I was talking about very, very recently. But the problem is, is my history is like a pornographic nightmare to search through. So we've got to be really, really careful. Um, don't worry, this is this is completely legitimate topical thing though. So let me just go into yesterday. What was I searching for on Google? Do, 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 do. Oh wait, oh, I've been on the internet loads this morning already. Let me just go into yesterday. So guys, talk amongst yourselves whilst I just do a little bit of side finding. Hempel. Rubens, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry. Thanks for holding on. So one of the great art masters, Rubens, and all of his fantastic works um, is a pretty interesting example because he... Now, I don't know much about my art history, but I listen to people who do, and a tiny bit of it filters into my brain, but not much, so... Do double check this information for yourself. Um, but Rubens is one of um, the greats, one of the old masters. And there was something very comic book styly about what he does because his poses and a lot of his work still came from imagination. And he used to um, kind of criticize a lot of the other masters of his time by basically saying, look, you, you're incredible workers. If you put down a model and you set up the area and you set up a pose, you can realistically create it. Um, but you're realistically creating, and this is the same story that we're even have in, having today on social media across artists. Spoiler alert, there's no one right answer, so don't really worry about it. Um, but he would criticize them and say, you're not including enough of your imagination into your artwork. You're always painting and drawing what's in front of you. You need to take that and just have fun with the poses and express some different things. So obviously a lot of Ruben's work is, you know, interesting angles, big flying angels tumbling up and out of the sky and all of these big kind of em emphatic pieces of like war and peace and stuff like that because he allowed himself a little bit of leeway. And he's also very much like um, uh, the tactician and the negotiator because he'd often have to paint in a way that pleased him as an artist, but pleased his patrons and pleased his patrons' egos. Um, so you had to kind of be very careful back in those days as to what you're up to. So yeah, um, working to life studies and painting accurately and realistically, some people are just like, ooh, why don't you take a picture if you're gonna make it so technically perfect? Um, but honestly, if you enjoy it and you get pleasure out of it, no, just fucking do it. But yeah, um, you're gonna reach a point, I'm sure, where you're just like, okay, but where's me? Where's Flavor Flav in this juicy drink? Do you know what I mean? I need to start, you know, get another tap of the sachet and ting, 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 stir it into the mixture. I want a bit of me and artwork that has a style. So yeah, Maxi Mabula, I totally get it. Absolutely. Um, really good point. Walpole V Everywhere says, hey, Mikey. Hello there, Walpole. I hope you're doing well. Hey, man, I can't complain. How are you? How are you? Oh, always busy. Um, I recommended the comic Usagi Yojimbo by Stan Sakai. Uh, the story of Usagi Miyamoto, an Edo-era samurai, told with an anthropomorphic cast. It's been going since 1984. Oh, shit, that's the year I was born. Uh, but I recommend starting with the book Yokai to see if you like it. Dude, thank you very much. I will absolutely add that to my suggested. I'm... I'm quite in the mood for a bit of anthropomorphism, if you know what I mean. I'm reading a lot of stuff that has people. Um, but uh, when I was a kid, like, so, like, I couldn't afford anything when I was a kid. We, were, we weren't, like, a wealthy household or anything. But I remember, and I know this is aimed at girls, but I don't care. I remember on TV um, seeing uh, the animals of Farthing Wood. And there was, like, uh, this kind of, like, toy series of all these little bunnies and tea sets and things. Okay, I'm not doing myself any favours, am I? Um, so I'm always just like, hey man, if you want to make a character, but it's really like a rabbit that walks and talks and has a sword, fuck yeah, I'm in, I'm in. Okay, well, Paul, thanks for that one. Oh, and also, if you think it's hard uh, to do art to Radiohead, try doing it to Sabaton. Sabaton? Sabaton? Is that like a saboteur? Sabaton band. I'm just on Google. Uh, oh, it looks very aggressive. Okay, I'll uh, I'll give that a look in Spotify. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Oh yeah, guys, if you want to recommend music, go for it. I'm really into my um, electronic, space age, chill, synthwave, 80s, you know, that entire spread uh, kind of vibe at the moment. Hope you're well. And uh, Raven said, uh, no joke, this was my childhood. Uh, my dad would go out for Siggy's and come back two months later from uh, Foxwoods Casino. Oh, Raven, I'm so sorry. Well, look, I'm glad you feel safe enough to share. Come on. Big hugs to you. Yeah, I made like a uh, daddy's gone out for cigarettes kind of joke because it took me so long to do another episode last time. Um, Gabby Johnson says, whenever an advert pops up in a drawer of Mikey, I get heavily confused. DWM 
plus monetization? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, okay, this is, I actually agree, this is super weird. Um, YouTube have not demonetized for last DWM. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, <laughs> it's so rare. So, you know, we're waving our victory flags on that one. Thank you for society. Thank you everybody for, uh, you know, bearing with adverts, but you know, that that's how I afford my cups of tea. And Matthew Williams says, uh, I like games where I can immerse myself into the character specifically, uh, which is why I have a strong lean towards RPGs with character creators. And maybe that's due to me playing Zelda as my first game as a kid. Uh, and I think I can name Link after myself. Wait. Uh, oh, the fact that I could rename Link after myself was amazing to me as a seven-year-old, even though it's not really a big deal. Uh, life is fairly mundane and there's lots of things which you don't have control over or you lose interest uh, with the boring things like the life and the stories, the characters and the adventure quests that you get in RPGs, however, you're important, you're the main character and due to your actions, it pushes you to explore stuff that you're always into. It caught my interest, which is why I'm also a big fan of the isekai genres. Okay, um, I kind of read it a bit weird for some of the punctuation, but it's really clear, dude. Thank you so much, Matthew Williams. Yeah. Well, Cyberpunk 77, that's big character creation time as well, apparently. And uh, yeah, following the paths of RPG characters is really, really big. One of the main reasons why I'm such a massive fan of Final Fantasy 7. One of the reasons as well why, as much as, uh, and, and 10, um, but one of the reasons why, as much as I really loved Final Fantasy 12, um, I can't rate it too highly because the characters just were just nothing they were all the same they were just a gray brown blur of ugh, here we go characters his Vaughn and Pinello and blah and blah because obviously they made that game to be very specifically about Vash and then very late in the stage they added in two younger characters so that Final Fantasy 12 would appeal to a younger audience um but they didn't really write any script around them so they just became two more extra characters that had to suck some of the storyline out of all of the surrounding characters creating this slightly blander homogenized overall team now sure there was um brown haired spike from buffy the vampire slayer who hung around with the rabbit lady um but other than that mate i can't remember any of them. i can't remember any other character from final fantasy 12 but i love the game it was beautiful i love the mechanics i love the world building i just there was just no story that i really remember all i remember was interesting monsters and uh going from map zone to map zone uh, so yeah um, when it's done right and you become that RPG protagonist and you're deep and into it, yes. Other times, ugh. Uh, Captain Soggybeard says, uh, I have the Deathgate cycle up on my bookshelf. Dude, get yourself a can of Coke. Um, Hugh the Hand is amazing and all, but dog, that's all. Dog, yes! So do you know what? I didn't say this in last week's episode because I didn't want to go too deep down the alley of how much I really enjoyed the Deathgate cycle. Um, but, uh... Huverhand and Dog and what they are and what their relationship is between each other. Yes, yes. Also, Final Fantasy VII is one of my favourite games of all time, so I absolutely love the Final Fantasy art. Oh, thank you very much. I hope you're going to enjoy next week's Tifa. As for a recommended series, I definitely recommend... Read more. Let me just open this up. Okay, I'm not going to read all of this out loud because it's a whole list of books and series, but I will just skim through it. The Wheel of Time, because it's completed in 14 books. Wow. Um, somewhere between Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones, politically at least. Nice. Uh, Eiserhorn and Ravenor. Fantastic. Traitor, a Star Wars novel by Matthew Stover. Oh, I've never considered Star Wars books. Jason Solo. Oh, expanded universe stuff. Over things before Disney poo-pooed everything. Okay. Uh, Conan, short stories by Robert E. Howard. Uh, and I love the art, Mikey, my man. Mikey, my man. As somebody who's trying to get back into drawing after over 10 years, dude, it doesn't matter. Pick up that pen. Come dive in. Come join us. After 10 years of virtually nothing, I keep coming back to your videos. Hi, hi. I uh, love the commentary and the tutorials, helping me remember my big titty roots. Much love. <laughs> You're welcome, dude. Hey, Captain, I'm just going to uh, control C all of your book suggestions in that middle. Brilliant, dude. Thank you. Added and pasted. Uh, Gamey Doll says, hello there, hello there, Gamey Doll. This is my first time in the comment section. Welcome on in. Grab yourself a cup of tea, get comfy. I wanted to ask something. I've recently started drawing with Photoshop and I noticed that when I zoom in, my drawing looks more pixelated than yours or in other videos. Do you know why that is? Read more. Thank you. Oh, okay. No, you're welcome. Um, yeah, it's to do with, uh, the amount of pixels that are on your page. So, um... 
DPI is dots per inch. I'm trying to work out if I can explain this clearly or if I should just recommend a book that talks about it really well. You know, I'm going to do both. One sec. I'm just going to go off piece. No worry, guys. I'm just skiing down the other hill. That's not a euphemism. Is this the right book? Here we go. So, basically, uh, there is a book called Beginner's Guide to Digital Painting in Photoshop Characters. Uh, by 3D Total Publishing, and on the uh, on the cover there's a very beautiful lady with white and pink hair in a spacesuit. Uh, I'm I do actually quite like this book, but I'm not trying to sell you this book. It's got nothing to do with me. I didn't make it, but it does talk about a lot in the beginning, um, all of the basics of Photoshop, canvas size, what it is, and why we do it. Uh, in a nutshell, um, what I tend to work to in Photoshop is a free 300 DPI, and that means that when I set up a page. Although that page just fits inside of your screen, um, the system or the computer understands that it's the size of an A3 sheet of paper. And for every one inch on that A3 sheet, there's 300 little dots of detail. Um, if you up it to 350 dots per inch, there's going to be even more dots of detail. So the more that you zoom in, um, the more it's still going to look really smooth until you keep zooming in and you start to see those separate dots again. Um, so maybe, for an example, when you're opening up Photoshop and opening up a page, your page might also be 300 DPI, but maybe yours is just an A4 sheet of paper, half the size. Between you and me, screen to screen, it's not going to look any different because we're both dealing with, um, you know, an A4 shaped thing. But uh, you actually have a smaller page that you're working on. So even if you're still 300 dots per inch, uh, as you zoom in, you're going to have less room to get even more detailed work in. So the higher the DPI dots per inch and the bigger the canvas you work on, the actual paper size, the more you can kind of get those details. And most professionals I notice uh, do at least 300 DPI. Most, to be honest, do at least 350 these days. And if it's not an A3 size canvas, it's maybe closer to um, 4,000 times 6,000 pixels, which isn't a million miles different either. Um, so yeah, have a play with that and see how it affects your artwork. Ideally, um, you probably just want to have as much detail as you could possibly fit in. Maybe your artwork isn't too detailed, but in terms of your canvas size, as much as you can actually do without it slowing down your computer um, is probably the happy rough medium. Let's sip this. Hmm. Kuru M or Kurui M says, never have I been so excited to draw whilst listening to something once again. Hey, thank you very much for popping me on a background whilst you're getting your artwork done. Hello, hello. And Vinish says, hey, Mikey. Hello there, Vinish. Um, I've been spending the past year listening to Draw of Mikey's whilst practicing drawing. So thank you so much for doing these. Hey, no, you're welcome, man. It gives me pleasure. I, dude, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. So I'm glad it works for both of us. It's a huge motivation and your rants are very entertaining. <laughs> oh, no. Also, what are your thoughts on the Inktober controversy? Oh no, I got I got to be careful with my ranting. Inktober controversy. Well, well, well. Now, old man Mikey isn't always in touch with stuff, but I did certainly hear that. Um, and by the way, I might not be getting the names correct, so you know, take this with a pinch of salt. Um, so the guy behind Inktober, obviously, like there's a little bit of a flack and a little bit of an unhappy audience when. Um, he was working on his Inktober book, which meant he had to get all the licensing and a copyright and a trademark, which meant he had to kind of like do a few takedown requests from other people that were using his Inktober um, imagery and logo and stuff. Um, so, you know, swings around about fair, but like, you know, kind of had a point, uh, but I'm not going to get into it. And then I think there was another thing where his Inktober book is coming out now soon, but there's another um, artist I want to say marcus or marco brunel am i completely wrong who's also made um some how to you know how to ink how to color in a ink and how to be an ink illustrator book and uh he found like a lot of shocking similarities what do i think about it i think you should watch a video by ethan becker do you guys know ethan becker he's always got a knife and he's always angry you think you're so smart you think you're so good <laughs> you know that guy never draw of curves only draw of triangles uh, he is uh, an incredible illustrator who hides his incredible talent behind um, some very pacey meme uh, stuff. Um, but he actually did a deep dive and just looked at loads of how to draw of ink books to kind of prove, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of similarities between these two people. Um, um, but there's also a lot of similarities between those two and all ink books, including ink books that came out before both of them. Uh, and kind of the things that they're trying to teach because there's a certain rhythm and direction of how you do things. 
you're not going to make page one of your how to draw of inks book um how to do advanced shading uh, and make the last page how to actually draw a single line and crosshatch you're going to probably teach some of the fundamentals and the basics and expand upon these ideas first and then go into more detailed stuff and join all these different concepts together later in a book because that's usually the most coherent way to express this information to people right you can't do b until you've learned a um so there's a certain number of similarities that i think the guy is seeing and uh maybe kind of reading a little bit too much into but there's also similarities where the guy clearly has had inspiration from some of his work so it's one of those hot potatoes um i think uh uh ethan becker sums it up very very well as in yeah, it looks like there's something there, but also, what are you going to do? You can't just hate people and want to cancel their career every single time somebody does something you don't like. Cancel culture is fucking disgusting. Short of it being because you, it turns out like a, you know, a film director turned out to be a horrific rapist or something. In that case, <laughs> fine, fine. Yeah, if you've been abusing women for years of your career, sure. Um, but when it, I think like the whole cancel culture, like knee jerk reaction thing is very problematic. And that's one of the issues of Twitter and giving a whole um, voice to an audience that doesn't necessarily <laughs> deserve to have one. Um, so yeah, I don't know too much about it. Um, looks like there is definitely some inspiration, uh, but how much do you really want to take that personally? Because this guy was obviously really upset. And uh, some of the stuff he was talking about was just like, well, I think a lot of ink books do that, not just your two but also yeah there's a little bit of point in there i'd certainly be a bit upset so i understand where he's coming from you never know oh and by the way talking about being upset by people ripping off stuff here is your yearly annual reminder that mikey loves uh rode microphone products they're really good audio products by the way i'm not sponsored don't worry and mikey hates wait what are they even called so wait oh for... do you know what? i hate them so much i forgot about them who's that other there's another audio product so my brain starts to die. Audio products by... Does anybody know that audio product brand I hate? Hmm. I want to say... Hmm. Do you know what? Okay. Give me, give me two minutes. Sip some tea. Let me see if I can just find the name of this. Because I really, really hate these guys. But the problem is, is that I don't actually hold a grudge very well because I'm quite forgetful. This is also why I'm really, really good with secrets. Because, like... You can tell me something deep and personal and I will take that shit to my grave because, um, you know, the next day I've already forgotten about it. Oh, was it like something sound, something audio? I'm just uh, searching something. Who's the audio team behind Dead Space 3? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, fuck. Almost on the tip of my tongue. Dead Space 3. Dead Space for each. They did like the foley and the sound effects and stuff. So sorry to keep you. Internet movie database question mark? No, no, it's not going to come to me. Oh, man, this really annoys me. It's, oh, it's, so, guys, I really apologize for all this dead time, but it's genuinely on the tip of my tongue, and I haven't quite reached it. Something audio. I want to say, like, I almost want to say, like, varsity audio or deity audio. It's not that. It's not either of those things. Deity. Deity microphones. Wait, one sec, one sec, one sec. Oh, oh, oh one sec. <laughs> fuck deity microphones yeah 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 so guys guys i just want to be very clear year after year fuck deity microphones the only uh business i personally blacklist fucking talk about ripping content so for those of you who have been here for a while you probably heard this before i'm sorry i'm gonna have a really quick moan and then we're gonna crack on so like we're not like a, so we're like a, I like to think I'm a medium YouTuber, right? I don't want to be up my own ass smelling my own farts and thinking everything's fine. Because, you know, we're all just human beings. It's it's not that special, but thank you for subscribing. Um, but before I was a medium YouTuber, I was just some guy playing Let's Plays and videos and other stuff on the internet, right? 
So this uh, microphone audio technical group called Deity Microphones stole my content. They ripped um, me playing Dead Space 1. Uh, they took that content of one of my scare compilations and they didn't just like, you know, use it for their own promotions. They used it for their own advertising to sell their products. So somebody one day was just like, oh, Mikey, um, are you aware that you're in an advert that's going around on Facebook and in Instagram? And Deity Microphones, these scumbags, had ripped my content, obviously resized it so none of my name and none of my logo and stuff was in there. And it was me just like screaming, playing Dead Space 1. And the advert was just like, this is the sound of fear. This is the sound and audio quality of Deity Microphones. We worked on this game, Dead Space 3, and blah, 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 buy our products. So I was like, you motherfuckers. Number one, it wasn't Dead Space 3. It was Dead Space 1, which they didn't work on. Number two, I don't use any of their products. Number three, I'd never heard of them and they were using my content without permission. So I was just like, oh, fuck. So I got in touch with them. Uh, they utterly ignored me because who am I? I'm just some little nobody, right? Let's not worry about little Mikey Mega Mega over here. No, nobody will ever hear of this guy. They completely ignored all of my correspondence. I emailed different parts of their offices. I was just like, guys, you've just ripped my content. Uh, you're falsely advertising it for your products, which weren't used for your video game, which wasn't played uh, without permission. Could you take down this video? Uh, so what I had to eventually do, because Mike, when Mikey's angry, Mikey gets stuck in. I went onto their Facebook page and just every single fucking post on their Facebook page, I went into the top of the comments and I posted, blah, blah, blah. You've still not responded to my emails involving the fact that you've stolen my content to falsely advertise your products. Next post, straight to the top, blah, blah, blah. So I just spammed their Facebook page. And then a couple days later, somebody from their marketing got back in touch with me. It's just like, uh... Uh, they were just like, oh, I've checked with our legal team. I don't think it's false advertising, so we've got nothing to worry about, but I will take down the video to make nice. Oh, you, you fuckers. <laughs> so, Mikey, what kind of audio equipment do you recommend? Rode. Rode's lovely. I'm using a Rode microphone right now. Rode are great. Mikey, what audio equipment and products do you hate? Deity microphone. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be this man. I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be good. Let the hate flow through you. It gives you focus. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I don't want to keep vibing into the dark side like this. But um, I'm glad I double checked. I'm so sorry for that dead time. I just had to Google it and remind myself to be angry because um, it doesn't come naturally to me. Um, but yeah, that was your annual reminder that fuck deity microphones. Let's all meet up this time next year, my friends. And uh, we'll say the same thing again as we reach Door of Mikey episode 200. <laughs> Fucking scumbags! Man, they're just like, do you know what? Fuck this guy. We can just rip his content. Ah, ah, ah. When I, I tell you what, when I get, um, if we hit a million subs on this channel, I'm going to be like, guys, it's my million subscriber thank you video. Come watch this video. And the video is just going to be the camera on me. And I'm just going to be like, right, now that you're all here and we've made it to a milli, I want to tell you why you can all go and fuck deity microphones in the ass. Okay, this video is getting demonetized. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, man, I'm so, I'm, I'm vibrating. I'm so angry. I'm ready to fight. My fight or flight response has kicked in. Okay, let me have some tea and calm down. Let's get back to your comments. Oh, who mentioned? I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I think I just got myself all worked up. Hmm. Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm really sorry if I've just turned you all off. Um, Hatari uh, Folf says, first time commenting. Oh, hello there. And I really don't know why. Hey, you're always welcome to comment, guys. Come on, safe space. Uh, any he says after just shouting. Anyhow, you're really an inspiration. Oh, for an entirely Christian reasons, of course. Oh, of course. I love the style of video. And uh, how about checking out Konohana Kitan? It's probably my favorite anime. Hatari Folf Thank you very much for the kind words. Of course, like, I want you guys to try out drawing. It's all really good stuff. You guys know why I think that, so I won't go over the spiel. But hey, if it helps, that makes me a happy chappy. Also, read more. Uh, nice to see you back. Hope you're all okay. Almost there. There's always something that we've got to do before we see the sunlight on the horizon. But, uh, you know, you uh, try to ride the highs of the waves as, with as much gusto and fun and roll with the punches when you have to. Um, I like video games, you say, but I can play with friends that are not too competitive. But mainly games with an amazing atmosphere. Oh, and good soundtracks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, a, a good score will be half the value of an entire game sometimes, I think. 
I'm, it all comes back to Final Fantasy again. Guys, what are your best Final Fantasy games? Rank from best to worst. Uh, also, uh, yeah, I'm glad you said uh, friends that you can play of, uh, games that you can play of friends. Friends that you can play of games. That's a that's a different kind of night out. Um, so, yeah, um, and that's really interesting as a case study for Among Us. Uh, isn't that brilliant? I've brought it all the way back around to the uh, fan art I'm doing in the background right now. Um, because, sure, if you make a bad video game, in fact, I was hanging out in somebody's uh, live stream, another artist who was talking about this as well. If you make a bad video game, everyone's going to go, this is a bad video game, it sucks. But it helps give you an idea that even if you put all the right things in play, the right team, the right pace, the right stuff, together to make a good video game, excuse me burping, it's still an absolute roll of the dice um, as to how successful that game is going to be because there's so many things you can't control. So take Fall Guys, and I'm sure you guys have all seen this kind of like case study by now or aware of the whole situation, but take Fall Guys. The developers are making this fun, exciting game. It's relatively simple. It's a load of beans. It's a competitive knockout tournament. It's basically, you know, Mario Party for the next generation. It's fun. It's bright. It's simple. You can get engaged and play with people online. And this game was kind of going in popularity and it was just starting to sink a little bit. And obviously COVID has locked everybody down. And because of that, a very, very simple game, which was originally released in 2018, just started to get a little bit more traction. A few streamers started playing it and all their other streamer friends wanted to try it as well. Next thing you know, everybody on Twitch is playing this game. It's on everybody's radar. Everybody else is downloading and playing this game because we're all stuck at home. We can't go out and socialize. Here is a very simple concept video game which involves talking to your friends and more importantly, lying to your friends a little bit as well, just for a load of fun. And there are... You complete the round and that's it. There are no penalties for losing. There's nothing very good for winning. You simply play game after game and you just vibe with your friends on Discord or talk to them online. A two-year-old game, it turns out, has just had the, what's it, the wind beneath its wings invigorated because of a, a international virus pandemic <laughs> that's locked things down. Like they probably two years ago weren't sitting there programming a game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I really hope a virus breaks out worldwide and makes everybody shut in. That would be great. Oh, yeah, let's let's put that into the code. It's just the fucking the luck of the draw. Um, so, yeah, like uh, there are probably some great games that just fall by the wayside through no fault of their own, just by the power of circumstance. It's the power of circumstance. Da, da, da. Ooh, oh, yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I just find that super, super fascinating. Let me sit this. Oh, and the makers of Fall Guys, too. Um, they were, no, no, sorry, the makers of Among Us, there we go, were going to make Among Us 2. And then they've realized that actually they should just focus all their attention to the first game. Because by the time they've made a sequel, uh, we won't actually care anymore. Part of the reason why that game is so big is because currently there's no video games coming out. And I'm talking about the influence that Twitch has and live streamers in general on the video gaming community and what people are interested in. We're all sitting here waiting for the next Xbox and waiting for the next PlayStation 5. That's going to happen over the next couple of months. Uh, and once that does, I'm pretty sure we're all going to stop playing Among Us uh, to some degree. So they know that there's no point making a sequel because by the time they get that program to put it out, the landscape of their audience will have changed dramatically again. So they're just going to cash in as much as possible with what they've done now. And hats off to them. You know, it worked out really, really well. Okay, guys, I think we have time for one more. Uh, Alex Papel says, this man just disappears and then reappears when we need him the most. That is right, my friends. Daddy, why is that YouTuber running from the police? Because he's the hero we need right now, son. Not the hero we deserve. dum 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 Da, 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 da. I'm not wearing hockey pants. Bum, 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 bum. Swear to me. Ah, oh, Nolan Batman films. I remember them. Okay, guys, one last thing I want to leave you with because it's just reminded me. If you've never watched this video before or never heard of it, go onto YouTube, type in Predator the Musical. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Da, 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 da. Seriously, Predator the Musical. Put a smile on your face right now. Give that a quick YouTube uh, search and uh, then go on to twitch.tv forward slash Mikey Mega Mega come hang out with me. You guys are absolutely fantastic. On screen, of course, you've seen the fantastic patrons' names scrolling. Again, patreon.com forward slash Mikey Mega Mega. Chuck me a dollar if you want, and in return, you'll get all of my tutorials work packs. It's as simple as that. See, it's never free. I'm always giving something back. And uh, I love you guys. I'll see you next week, and take care.